Hey guys, we are multiplying two two-digit numbers today. There are different strategies and ways to do this, and I will link a playlist where I do some other strategies. But for this one, we are going to do the standard algorithm. This is the way I was taught, and it's, at least for now, probably the most common way, but that could change. We'll see. All right, so here's our standard algorithm. To multiply these, I'm going to write them one on top of the other. So I'm going to do 41 times 31. Okay. Now I'm going to do one times one is one. One times four is four. So I multiplied the one. Now I need to multiply the three. But when you look at this, it's not really a three. It's actually a 30. I multiplied the one of the 31. Now I'm multiplying the 30. So to account for that, I put a zero here as a placeholder. Okay. So then three times one gives me three. Three times four gives me 12. And then I add these guys and end up with 1,271. All right. There is that one. Now let's look at this next guy. This one we're going to carry. There's a reason I'm showing you two examples. Okay. So we're going to have 56 times 34. So I do four times six, which gives me 24. And I'm going to carry the two over there. Four times five gives me 20. And then I add that two, so I end up with 22. Then I kind of like to scribble this guy out, or if I were writing in pencil, erase it, because we used that one and we don't want it to interfere with our next multiplying, okay? Now, again, I'm not actually multiplying by three, it's actually a 30, so to account for that, I put a zero here, okay? Three times six gives me 18. So I need to put a one here, 18. And three times five gives me 15, plus that one gives me 16. And then I'm going to add these up. And I end up with 1,904. Okay, so if you are a parent, this is probably the way you were taught, right? If you're a student, this is probably the way your parents are saying, why aren't they still teaching this, <laughs> right? Okay, this is a great way, but it does have some limitations. The carrying can get a little confusing, especially when you get into bigger numbers, right? It's not my favorite thing, but we work with it, right? Another thing is that zero can be kind of confusing. Again, as you multiply bigger numbers, you add more zeros. So there are some tricky things about it that can be difficult for some students. Now, I'm not saying it's all bad. It is a great strategy, but there are some other strategies. And like I said at the beginning, I will link that playlist if you want to see those. Thanks.